Okay, let's go ahead and call a meeting in order, and I uh, want to thank you for being here tonight. I certainly appreciate you coming. And we're going to uh, have our Pledge of Allegiance, and Ed's going to lead us in that, and then Brother Jack is going to come and give our invitation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, been suggested by many other mayors when I just got back from the late municipalities meeting. That's how many of the cities do it. I know Winfield does it. And they say it just helps keep the flow of the agenda going more smoothly. And that's, that's the reason to do it. Okay. And if we want to change it at the end of the meeting, we can always make a motion to amend it. You know? Right. And it's going to take a two-thirds vote to go back and, and right. amend that. Well, um, it also says, I mean, I know we've adopted this, I, I copied it out, how the meetings are supposed to run, and in the Robert's Rule of Order, it says that when the agenda is made, that whoever makes the agenda is to call the members and see if they have any new business that they want to discuss to be put on the agenda. Now, we don't actually have a specific uh, numerated thing that says new business, but we have miscellaneous business, so is that where the new business would go, Scott? So... So when the agenda is made, the council members need to be asked if they have anything to go on the agenda under the new business. By what you're reading, I guess that would make sense. Yes. Okay. Well, 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 the reason for the change, I mean. Well, one thing it does, Tim, is keeps the flow going. It keeps members from the council or anybody else being you know, the same things that's not on here. What about the general public out there? Can they, uh, this, they well, here last week, I think, they want to say something to get a chance to. They always have an opportunity. We put out the agenda on Friday. So, well, if anybody wants to be on it, well, after the meeting, they I can always know. ask me to be on the agenda. But you can't just show up at a meeting and expect to be able to say anything you want to say anytime you want to without letting us know exactly what you want to talk about. It keeps, you know, we could be bombarded by somebody that wants to say something but have no idea what you're going to say. That's not fair to me or you or anybody else in the city. It's not to keep people from talking. That's not the point. I think, Tim, last time, and there's been other times, too, that every time just sort of got overwhelmed by one subject and couldn't get off of it and Got to maintain some kind of order. I mean, Kenny, are you saying or Tim that we don't even need an agenda? What do you say? Oh no, no, no! I have asked to be on the agenda uh, several times for the previous meeting and this meeting. And uh, last meeting was the first time after my request that this was on here, and uh, it's on here again. And I'm not on here, and I'm just wondering how I many I just well when you ask to be on it I'd like to know what you want to talk about. one time okay. Okay. All right. okay then we can handle that okay. but but if somebody wants to think you know one of you wants to be on all you gotta do is ask me and 
you know, and tell me, explain. I don't think it's right for any council member to come and try to point out something I'm doing wrong on purpose. You know, if you're doing that to get back at me or something like that, that's not right. Well, first that's of all, right. our this should not even be thing. discussed up here in front of the public. They've elected us and expect us to carry on the business with some integrity and pride and and uh, a little bit of knowledge. This all needs to be discussed uh, in among ourselves and get this worked out. Well, it's okay. We got a recommendation to approve the agenda that's presented. Yes or no? I'll make a motion for you. Okay, great. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. Okay. So, seeing anybody out here tonight wants to ask a question, bring up something I can. Well, I'd like to know what it is. You can say what you want to talk about, yes. I but, believe you know, it's you not an ask. open, you know, it's, it's not a public hearing. Council meetings are to be, you know, in a format, a business professional format. And that's all I'm trying to do. The same as the league suggests in all their meetings when they say how you hold a council meeting. That's exactly the way other cities do it. It's never been a problem, as far as I know. Well, I think you ought to add, add at the end of the agenda as presented or to be amended if needed. Well, well, I understand the league says that last time, I know the people, last administration were given three minutes. Well, I think actually it's supposed to be five minutes. That, that no, it's, holds it it's to some kind of board. Mayor's over the agenda, so I can we can do it. If we want to amend it, we can. That's no problem. We got a first and second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. no. Going on, the second thing is a recommendation to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make a motion. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Gary. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you. Third thing is a recommendation to approve the count's payable bills. Is there a motion to approve those bills? I'll make a motion that we approve them. I've looked at them all day and what was sent to me on the internet. Is there a second? Okay, Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Number four is a recommendation to approve the purchase of a security system, which I told Alan we may not purchase this tonight, but Alan, uh, oh yeah, he would please here. Come and uh, present to us your proposal that you and I talked about several months ago. And the reason that we wanted to do this was the security of our city hall and <clears throat> You were not able to do this at the last meeting. Yeah, and I apologize for that, Mayor. Uh, one thing I do want to say, you said security system. This is a surveillance I'm system. I meant, okay. So we, there's a difference. Yes, sir. But uh, what, I, what I proposed to the mayor, uh, I don't know if, if you know, I've got one of these or not. This is just a good sort of diagram of what we're doing or what I am suggest. We, you know, we hear the news every day, things happen in different towns all over the United States. And, uh, you know, this is just a way that City Hall would have some surveillance cameras that if something happened, at least you'd have it on video. Uh, it's not going to stop it, it's a good deterrent, but uh, you would have it on video. And, and I hate to say this, but probably the most recognized one that I've ever seen was in bad. And, uh, you know, that, that just pretty much sealed that case. But anyway, this is what I propose to put in a, a 16 channel DVR. That would give you the ability to add on to it later on. I don't think you need uh, 16 cameras right now. I propose 12 cameras. Those are IR, night vision, infrared. Uh, they're high definition cameras too. These aren't your, just your SD cameras, you know, standard definition. Um, Have you got any of these cameras you're proposing that somebody else is using already? I do. I brought a couple of these. These are actually sold and they're sold them yet, so I don't mind if you, 
be breaking them out. But uh, I tell you, uh, this technology is just getting bigger and bigger for the and I know it's just getting better. Uh, I know most of y'all know that we started a strategy station back in 2004 with James Fan with the SkyCam system. And we're now in the process of changing all of his cameras over the So, I'm going to let you jump that camera. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the dome camera uh, inside the city hall. I, you know, I, I think you need some dome cameras because you, you, know, you don't want the city hall looking like it's under surveillance or something like where Tim's at. Then uh, you know, it makes it look friendlier. But you also want something that show detail. So how does that camera have a way of turning it, rotating inside this dome? Or is it fixed? No, they're, one they're fixed camera. You turn them to where you want them to point, yeah. and then they're set that way. We'll lock them down. Uh, you can get the kind that'll turn, but they're much more expensive. Yeah. These are, you know, a camera goes by what they call TV line. It's sort of like a 1080 pixel, 720 pixel. Um, the more the, more <coughs> the TV line, the crisper the picture is. And, uh, so, you know, and in high definition, you have to have enough box and there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes with it. But anyway. Uh, also included a battery backup to the system. So the power goes off, these cameras will continue to run. They'll run probably for 30, 45 minutes before the power will shut off. Uh, it comes with a 19-inch color monitor, and we use RG59. We don't we don't use the small wire of that a lot of camera systems come with. We do our own wire. Uh, I don't know. There's this. I mean, I'll answer any questions. I don't know what I'll have to tell you. You got the same type system anywhere else already? Not in HD. We have we just so these are upgraded oh, yes. compared yes. to what you've got in other yes. areas. Very much so. okay. uh, I, I guess probably the, another yeah. system you could look at would be over here at Hamilton Middle School. We've got like 32 cameras over there. Uh, we've got two big monitors for the wind. Uh, Coach Devers' office, and you'd see them, and uh, you know he's got every corner camera somewhere in that school. <clears throat> and they've been up probably five or six years, maybe longer than that. How many of those will be outside and can be inside or do you need to tell me? I believe I put and I don't have my diagram with me. When I came and looked at City Hall, I think I put one at all the entrances <laughs> and the rest of them would be inside. I believe we got that last time Francis. If not, I can get you. We, we, we got, we ate it last That's time. it. Okay. All, all the doors are covered. Uh, we've got them, of course, like I said, at Hamilton Middle School, Brilliant High School. We've had them there for several years. Caught numerous people at Brilliant High School. Uh, kids just doing some crazy stuff, basically. But, uh, uh, Gewin, the water park. We've had them in there for numerous years. I mean, they've had thousands, they've had eleven hundred dollars stolen one weekend. And you know, our cameras show the guy doing it. And the police caught him on the spot of the sidewalk one day. You know, because they knew what kind of tissues he had. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff. These can be monitored also if access from your smartphone or something too. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. And I have them at Strata Station at different places that I can do, and we could do this with Chief of y'all or whoever you wanted, the Chief Police. You could monitor these cameras from anywhere there's an internet system. If you've got a computer or a smartphone, you can look at these cameras. Weekends, holidays, nights, we can always pull it up and see if there's anything going on. Okay. Is this considered a professional service so we don't bid it, or is it? 
I think you do it in the middle. I don't know what your bed law is, but it's 15 pounds. Don't bother me. <laughs> and I uh, did call, we have a, a fund, the uh, capital improvement fund, that we can use uh, from time to time for capital improvements. And this is something that's considered that wouldn't come out of our general budget, but would come out of the capital improvement fund we already have. We have uh, over $200,000 in this fund. <clears throat> and this is an improvement that it is approved. Uh, we asked to link a municipalities if this was something that would be considered a uh, capital improvement in it is. So, I mean, it wouldn't be anything that would come out of our general fund. It would just be coming out of our capital improvement fund if the council wishes to go ahead and pursue this. Discussion on uh, the possible purchase of this, and if there is a motion or uh, to approve it or look at something else, I need to know what y'all's wishes are. Who should be voting? Is there any problems? Uh, right here. Yeah, we're right here. I'm sorry, I definitely like to call. We made it, and I'm going to ask you for a motion. I am, if you want to do it. Um, like a motion that we'll purchase this uh, surveillance system. Is there a second? I'll second one. Great. Is there any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. Uh, uh, thank you, pal. How long does it take to get this? A few weeks? It would try two or three weeks to order the equipment and get it in. Okay. And uh, we've got some jobs that are in the form of city right now, so I'd have some I'm already committed to those. That's no problem. But we'll we get on the fast track. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, um, yes. thank you. Number five is a recommendation for immediate consideration of an ordinance to approve the city of Hampton uh, Municipal Code. And <clears throat> we have to have immediate consideration, then we can talk about it. Because I've got uh, Nathan here, and uh, to the help us discuss anything, Jan. I was just saying, since y'all discussed it at the last meeting, we we'll have to give immediate consideration. Okay. All right, let's keep on five and go to six uh, A recommendation to approve it, but we can have a discussion before we vote on it. Is that all right? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and have a discussion before I make a motion to, to approve it. Uh, Scott has looked over this. Jen has looked over this. Uh, it's been a long time coming for the community code. And... <clears throat> We've got Nathan involved on a lot of this, and he's overlooked it and worked with Sandra Fox at Mini Code, and they are both concurring that it's ready to go. So, if there's any discussion now, be the time to discuss this with Scott or Nathan uh, before we get a motion and second to vote on it. Okay, the first thing I want to know is um, according to Mini Code, it tells what the rec board shall do, but according to our resolution, the rec board is simply advisory. So is, how does that work? Sure, the, and, and the muni code is, that's just the company, it just puts our ordinances down, but it has our ordinance the way our ordinance is written, and our ordinance talks about certain things that the rec board can do, and has the power to do, but in the beginning of that ordinance it talks about the city funding the rec board, and that's a May provision, where the city may fund the rec board. If they do, then that gives the rec board certain powers. Y'all chosen to use the rec board as an advisory board, so you're not directing money to the rec board. And so y'all made that decision. In the future, if y'all want to make the decision of, yes, we'll give the rec board $10,000, and they may want to use it for fields or whatever, but that would give them that authority. But y'all in the previous council have chosen to look at the rec board as an advisory board rather than 
so when somebody pulls this ordinance book and goes to that and they look at it, it's going to be somewhat misleading because the resolution does not precede it saying that it is advisory only? I don't think it's misleading. Where's the resolution? What resolution? You, I thought that's what you told me when you know. No. no. Um, what did we do? Y'all just voted to add uh, certain, a lot of the members' term had expired. Y'all voted to add members to, uh, said a mo motion to add the following people to the Recreation Center Advisory Board. Okay. But nothing was changed about the. Uh, we just recreated it because it had been. You, you, you just, or we just, when y'all stated it, you just stated Advisory Board, but nothing was changed with the with the Rec Center ordinance. And, that, and that's how it's always been because of that provision that is basically nothing more until y'all give it money. Okay. And so y'all just use it as advisory. Okay. In here, there's a couple of places where uh, it has been added things that um, that contradict what the employee handbook says, and these are added items. The underlined items are added, correct? The underlined items are things that are extra, that didn't come specifically from the pooled ordinances, but have been changed and added to, correct? No, I think it's been changed. I think there was additions when new ordinances were presented to them as well. I mean, nothing has been added, like no one's created language. Okay. Well, in the, um, on page 19 of the ordinance, it says that the council votes on the city clerk and the police chief and that they can be removed by two-thirds vote. But in the handbook, it says that those are unclassified employees and those are appointed. So what what has the authority there, the handbook or the ordinance? Because that is underlined in there, so I was under the impression that the underlined items were you. The council appoints those, that's by state law. This says that an employee who serves at the pleasure of the elected official for whom he or she works by the city is an unclassified, and I thought that that was appointed. Right, we're, we're in the meat code again. Page 19. You're in the handbook, right? The handbook says that, my interpretation says that they're appointed. Muni code says we vote. Uh, the Muni code that I'm reading says the council at its first regular meeting after each election as soon as practical is out point. City clerk, but we vote on it. Well, that's how you appoint. But did we vote, or did you yes. appoint? We voted. Okay. No, there's nothing went back and been added. Just to be added prior ordinances. That's right. Our stuff took away off. The last council got this started and it's just getting them together. Is that correct? That's right. It's just compiling them. And a lot of the issues, I know we had, I think the last code was 42, and we had a lot of those that have been morphed into different things now. And Tammy had mentioned, I think, the mayor's salary. That's one thing that's been changed over the years. Um, some of the fire limits and those basically have been changed with the adoption of the building code. That's a, we've done away with those kind of things. But, um, right, nothing has been changed. It's just a compilation of the ordinances and trying to put them all in some kind of order to make sense. But in the alcohol ordinance, those two definitions were completely marked through and then two new definitions were written and underlined.
Just see, like those, those definitions are completely marked out, and then under it are two completely, or two new definitions underlined, and that's why I was going under the assumption that what was marked through was being omitted and what was underlined was new. Was that not done before they uh, received it, Scott? How far sure. back did this go? Did it not go back, Jan, to uh, 1920s, 30s, whenever? Um, I'm trying to so think it's under on it, so we have it. I'm not sure. No, I'm right. down real quick what the change is. Some of, that, some of those were state law, and I don't know if they did copy that. under the department heads says that the department heads generally under number five have power when authorized by the mayor to appoint and remove subject to personal personnel regulations all subordinates under them. The handbook says that for someone to be dismissed you have to go through these procedures and the council has to vote. But that's one of those underlying things in the Obviously, the council is the ones. You know, the department has has certain powers to suspend, mm -hmm. but not actually terminate. Well, this is a point and remove. What is the underlined text? Where did it come from? And why is it underlined? Some of it is from when we had additions or ordinances. Okay. I think, I could be wrong with this, um, the, some of the administrative issues in the beginning were just fairly standard kind of things that they implemented in. That's not actually law or ordinance. This would be something that would probably need to be uh, looked at, but that would need to be changed. But like my understanding is just some of the beginning words was just fairly common things to get started in, in it, but it's not actually ordinances or whatever, but that, that would be something that should be changed. Some of this, uh, where the underlying text is, is from a prior edition 
where this stuff was not included, so they included it in. And some of the things where they, in the text that you looked at, where they mentioned it's obsolete or it's just changed, whatever, we went back and looked at, we have taken out, where we may have had the 1942 code and we've had something different, or it's just something that just doesn't apply anymore. So you're telling me what I read may or may not be what we're both on? Because I don't know if the obsolete was taken out or left in. Yeah, I don't know what you've read. <laughs> 307 pages. Like it ain't all, 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 all fixed. <laughs> I mean, some of it was added from the final ones, but I, mean, I don't know if it's first last one you read, but a lot of that has been corrected from that. Where she had in here obsolete text and all that. I think we need to wait on this for a while. We waited a year. Well, I mean, if it ain't right, it ain't right. I thought they were just going to compile everything together and right. put it in as is, unless there was something that was so far outdated that it didn't even pertain to anything at <clears throat> the current time. That, that's the purpose. Was that not the purpose? That's what they've explained to, uh, to us right. as the administration. But we have not amended the alcohol ordinance since they started this, yet both of those definitions are completely marked through. And, and again, I, I'll have to look at that close to make sure, but I think that it's right, and I have no idea why they marked that. I mean, I, I didn't mark that. And what they've got a copy of is um, for forward. You have talked to her again and made more changes. And then Nathan is here, Nathan Willingham. They called to tell you about. Nathan, would you mind coming and just tell us? Just give us an update of what you and, and Sandra Fox talked about as far as the zoning part of the ordinance. And, uh, that we might be able to understand it because she. Uh, when, when it comes to the code, the only area that I claim any understanding of is in zoning text, which was the last chapter of the codification. And as y'all are all aware, uh, the original zoning ordinance was passed in 2010, and it was then submitted to MUNA code for them to codify. And then there was a major provision that was completed in 2013, which removed uh, and repealed some sections and uh, mainly, mainly repealed some things and then restructured the zoning designations, added the FAR and Part 1 and Part 2. Um, and, and it was a major overhaul and reclassification of the zoning designations from the city of Hamilton. Because there were two codes and a couple of different editors involved, my understanding is that MUNICO was not sure which of the provisions that were repealed in the 2013 edition were still valid or if any of them were. So what we did at NACOG was to go through the 2013 ordinance that was passed by the council and to reconcile it with what Unicode had, which again had some older provisions, um, airport zoning, for example, was repealed in 2013 because it never was used by the city. However, it appeared, uh, references to that appeared in the, the codification. So we went down the line and uh, just validated that what's in your codification is included in the 2013 ordinance. Um, part of the confusion, I think, for someone who is comparing the ordinance to the codification is that the codification process seeks to uh, standardize all of the municipal codes across a certain format. So, for example, Article 9 of your 2013, your now valid zoning ordinance, deals with definitions. Well, that, that in the standardization process get, got moved to Article 2 um, of the codification. Within each of those sections within the codification, however, at the bottom there are those, those references, those notes that refer back to the actual valid ordinance that, that was passed in. Uh, again, so what we did was we took the 2013 ordinance and compared it to the proof that was supplied by Munico and made sure that the sections that were repealed in 2013 uh, were in the structure text that they wouldn't, wouldn't come back and we addressed some of the footnotes about the text that was omitted from 2013 um, that in the proof at least they had um, reprinted because they were trying to merge the 2010 ordinance with the 2013 ordinance and the 
intent of the council was to uh, repeal or do away with a lot of the provisions that were less utilized in the 2010 ordinance when it was re adopted in 2010. So speaking only for the zoning ordinance section, which I think is about probably still 60 or so pages from the end of the codification, those sections, um, they do restate elements that are in the 2013 ordinance. They may be in different alignment or different ordering because of the standardization that's included in this codification process, but, but it is valid and accurately reflects what, what has been passed by the council. Any questions? That's just the zoning, right? Yes, just uh, chapter 44, I think is the way it's numbered. Any other questions? Thank you, Nathan. <clears throat> any other questions? Scott, you got any suggestions? Six months and find something with every single. There's 300 something pages. I gotta say, you won't call them to tell them to. You're supposed to go to print. Unless we can get it done to next meeting, they still get the place to go on. It doesn't matter where you want to Could you not? I'm sorry, but it's a lot of times you see these <coughs> things and they, they say approve the amendment, approve the whatever. Provided that certain changes are made uh, okay. to certain, and maybe on this thing you could even set a time limit and, and say, you know, when you think anything you catch between now and say next week or whatever. The sure, we can do that. That's do we need somebody in <coughs> the mini code to come and explain some of these things? I don't think so. We have to pay them. No slight to you, Scott, but I mean, you didn't mark it out. So. And you know, it seems to me, maybe it's just real plain and elementary, but common sense tells me that when you come upon a resolution ordinance or whatever, that when you come to that uh, particular point, if there's a problem with it at the time, I mean, I don't see how you can go through it again 307 pages or whatever. I've looked at it and that's very time consuming. Deal with it. Man, the main focus of this was just to get them in order that we'd have them to go to. And, and maybe Tammy's on the right page of comparing this and that, but um, I don't see how it would ever get approved if we continue on that path. When, Maybe I'm wrong. When is the next time that you would be able to make a, a grant? I think it's like an annual basis or something that they would come back and redo, or is it maybe every other year? What, what's the... I, I think any time that we add, that we can, we can have them amended. Sometimes it might be, a, if I remember correctly, maybe at the end of the year they would compile them all, but they would have, say we amended the alcohol ordinance next month, they would have a notation on their website with that amendment, but then they would recompile it, you know, maybe annually or biannually. But the online and version would be changed fairly quickly. That was my understanding. And, and one of the main things about this is that we do need to, to adopt in a general sense is the structure of, of the format, you know, how they compile everything in this chapter, like obviously the alcohol is in one chapter, zoning is in another, but that's fairly standard and makes sense. But the different way they have buildings, uh, building codes, the business licenses, the courts, officers, employees, that general format is one of the main main things they want us to approve. We need to get you know, the main text right, obviously, make sure there's no confusion, but the structure is one thing that we sure it's correct and everyone's okay with that and 
is that an issue from looking at it? You know, that it makes sense from. Laid out. I mean, you've got a table of contents at the beginning. It tells you the do's and don'ts and the powers that everybody has and and general information. And you have the table of contents and you just go down through there and put what you want to know. I don't see any problem with it. I, I thought for the most part um, everything was laid out in an organized manner. And Sandra and I discussed a few of those issues. Uh, ended up maybe getting rid of some and combining couple of others, but uh, for the most part, I think everything was fairly standard. Like, we did take out elections, because that's all governed by state law now. So, um, yeah, chapter 14 with elections was worth removed. So, every piece of paper that says reserved is just no more? No. Every, uh, what, no. what do the reserved pages mean? The reserved sections mean if us trying to we adopted some new regulation on drawing a blank as to what something completely new may be, but something like the alcohol that is completely new, we could designate that as Chapter 13. Uh, that's what that's reserved for. So it, instead of adding on, let's say we could have put them all in one, you know, one through 25, and then if we added a new section, it'd be Chapter 26 and on. We could have done it that way. Instead, she basically just had these reserved sections reserve chapters within. I mean, it can be done either way. But. The format's fine. The wording's, I mean, I just... Scott, what you just <coughs> I think it would be good to go ahead and adopt the format. Okay. And then uh, Jen and I can come and thank Sandra in the morning and go through some of these other issues um, okay. that's been pointed out to make sure we get the uh, need of that coconut, I guess. Right. So we're only going to adopt the format, no wording. No, I, I think it would be good to adopt it. I'm just saying if y'all wanted to go ahead and adopt the format tonight, that would be good. And format. Discussion and him getting back to us to adopt the text. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. Mr. Kurt Hankins, thank you, sir, for being here tonight. I want you to come give us an update on several projects that we have going and uh, considering studies that you have and that we've been waiting <coughs> to, uh, If you would, just discuss whatever you need to. All right, I'll be two or three different things. Yeah, we'll start with the uh, <coughs> environmental study at the Munson Ware Building. Okay. Uh, they have uh, been out uh, twice. Uh, the first time they tested three of the monitoring wells, uh, and the good news is that they did not take any volatile organic compounds, metals, or semi-volatile compounds. That's good. It is very good. Um, so uh, I've been told that uh, in those type of facilities, the semi-volatile compounds are generally what get into the ground and the groundwater, and that's what causes your problems. Uh, the fact that none were found in those first three tests was a very good thing. Uh, they did come back. Uh, they couldn't find uh, one of the monitoring wells, and they also did not know about the clarifier. Uh, Mr. Posey uh, pointed those out to them, and they have sampled those. I don't have results from those back yet. The um, 
the screen for the, the soil samples. Uh, the complete tests are not yet back, uh, but most uh, everything in the soils uh, that they have tested is below the screening levels, which was good. There are a few areas that were, they had some slightly elevated levels, but they appear to be associated with weed control. So they have sent some of those results down to ADM and are waiting back on a reply from them as to what they can perceive with that. Uh, and then um, they did find uh, in the pond, uh, there is some sludge in the pond that is hazardous waste uh, that will have to be disposed, dewatered and disposed of uh, in an approved manner. Uh, but it's not a whole lot of material uh, considering that the soils and the groundwater is in good shape and, and really only the bad spot is the sludge in the pond. Uh, I think things are looking very positive uh, on the environmental side. Uh, like I said, they're waiting on some additional feedback from ADM and some, some test results from the last stuff that they did. Uh, as soon as they get those, I'll have the final report and uh, deliver that to you. But preliminarily, everything's looking in pretty good shape, considering what I went on there over the years. Any questions about the environment? All right. On the uh, structural part of the building, um, our structural engineer from uh, Nashville came down, went through the building, uh, and uh, his report uh, indicated that the building was, uh, parts of the building were in good shape. The, uh, the vertical columns, vertical steel, the, uh, the outside walls are, are okay, in good shape, but uh, the bar joists on the main part of the building, the floor, uh, over the basement and the support structure for it is not in good shape uh, and uh, his final recommendation on that was that uh, uh, taking as a whole uh, the extent of the roof and floor damage rendered the facility financially beyond repair uh, he helped us put together a cost estimate of the repair that was attached to the back of the report uh, and that uh, came to about uh, $8 million to structure repair the building. That $8 million would get you a, a new roof, a new roof structure uh, with stabilized the columns and uh, stabilize that floor, flush ceiling over the basement. Um, but that then you would basically have a workable shell of the building to start from. So that's a Pretty high cost for a shell of a building. But, uh, uh, and he included some pictures that show <coughs> the areas that he looked at and the damage that was done. I, I did not, I guess I hadn't been in the basement, I didn't really realize the extent of the damage in the ceiling of the basement and the floor uh, their area uh, of those supports that hold that up. So that was his, uh, his report on the structural soundness of the building. So when your group went in a year ago and gave us and said that the building was structurally sound and gave us the estimate for putting the roof on, you're saying that y'all didn't look at the entire building? I'm saying we went in and took a quick look at the, we went in and looked at the roof and said, yeah, you know, we think we need to replace this, this, and this. And just, you know, we, yeah, we were looking for a number. We were looking for a, a, a budget number to try to see approximately how much it was going to cost. Uh, and that's what we came up with, the budget number for approximately how much it would cost to just replace the roof. This, the, the reason this number is so much higher is that all oh, the bar joists, uh, you know, we, we just thought the bar joists were okay. Uh, but once the structural engineer looked at them, he said, no, you're going to have to replace all the bar joists throughout the whole thing. And a big part of that cost was that floor basement area. So it wasn't structurally sound last year? That's correct. We didn't go down there. We were just looking at the roof. This was the whole whole building. This wasn't just the new part. You, this was the whole... He went through the whole... Yeah, he went through the whole building and looked and, uh, and you know... Yeah, he went through the whole building and looked at every up and down and sideways by the way. And Curtis, we know it's if they, 
it has deteriorated quite a bit since we've been in office. You know, when the Hamilton got the building 10 years ago, <coughs> maybe a roof might have saved that building. I don't know. It might not. It could have been up structurally on sound at that time. But sitting 10 years with holes the size of this room in there is, has not helped that building. Yeah, that, so, main, that, that main part has a, has a hole. As a matter of fact, some of these pictures show holes that, that weren't there a year ago. Yeah. It, I know it's gotten worse. I've, I've been in it many times, and uh, just in a year and a half, it's can, gotten worse and worse and worse. The, the problems in something like that kind of tend to grow exponentially. Mm -hmm. you know, once you get a hole, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Problems get worse and worse and worse. Okay. All right, and uh, then on the, uh, the aquatic uh, park study, we had the uh, last public meeting uh, last Thursday night. I saw the numbers from from that. Uh, they are preparing. As a matter of fact, I saw today right before I, I left, uh, I got a draft of the final report. Uh, there were a few things that, that needed modifying in there. Most notably, they had me stationed and had my address in Montgomery. I don't live in Montgomery. So, uh, uh, but they were they, a few things they got to get changed on the report, and then they'll have a final report to, uh, since I get it, I'll email it to you. Okay. You send out to the rest of them. Uh, it basically it gives a little more detail, but basically it says the same thing that, that Kevin said the other night, that, uh, you know, about the size and, and the, the demographics and all that sort of thing. Still five feet long. Hadn't changed, yeah. And that try, Ed. I'm sorry. I stole the Ed. Good try. <laughs> the fact of the cost is what we all want to know. What the yeah. Well, again, that's a that is what we what we have determined in the study as the right size facility, if you will, for for Hamilton that will draw enough of a crowd to create enough of a revenue to cover the operating cost. You certainly can build one for less than that, uh, but uh, you know there's there's no guarantee that they're bringing enough people to cover its its operating cost. Part, you know, the bad quote, the bad part of the building. Yeah. If the other part would be 
financially you know, feasible to be salvaged, or we're just better off to start start over. Just you know, to compare, right. it makes sense. <coughs> and I, I can. We have run those. We have run those numbers again. We envision that part of the building just coming out. Right. The, the ninety-three thousand per feet. So uh, we, I can. We can look at it and try to. Because if we end that. up, you know, eventually having to, you know, to build a, you know, a civic center or exhibition hall or whatever you want to call it, you know, it it could be to where if this portion, you know, is financially feasible. Again, we're talking about the short, what I call the short road portion of the building. Um, you know, if it's if it's financially feasible to to have that say as an exhibition hall, and then all you really have to add on is perhaps your concert hall or something you know, with, that would need, you know, the, the taller ceilings, you know, for those type of events. I just that's just a curiosity question to see if you know it might be financially better to do that or just you know to do you know to destroy the whole thing and start over. But I figured you might take a shot at answering that. Well from a from a personal standpoint, the from the outside, the nicer part of the building is the the big part. Right. Of uh, course. You know, so just to, to knock that down and leave the what I guess from outside would be the ugly part. With but it's not all I mean anything that we left standing down there was gonna have to be redone anyway. But if you had your druthers, and you're an expert, and you've gotten this report, do you think it's better to to try to salvage a part of this thing, or do you figure it's better to just go ahead and tear, tear it down and build a new version? That, I mean, what would be... Well, I mean, you know, you could spend, and I don't have an exact number, but you could spend millions of dollars renovating the short part, and again, just have a shell. You know, for, for the same millions of dollars, you could build a new building with electrical and HVAC and, and everything in it. So, and that that was part of the thing about this was that you know that eight million dollars gets you a shell. Mm -hmm. That's that's not a light. That's not a fan. That's you know, that's a shell to start it, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, but uh, <coughs> so uh, you know, at, at this point, new construction might be. May not be just it depends on what the. But if you started with the shell you're talking about, now eight million dollars, but add another figure to that probably be able to get a foot on the finish it out. To finish it out. Oh, yeah, that pretty close to that number to, to finish that much space. Better building. Are we still talking the same square footage? So, well, for comments you made earlier about, well, we, if we spend this amount of money on a building, we'll get this many square foot renovating the current building. Okay. Or versus we build a new building. How many square feet is that new building that you think would be with heating and air and all the amenities in it? Uh, how many square feet would that be? We, we have, I cannot remember the square footage. We, we have run an estimate. We did run a cost estimate on a a new um, building that would hold a thousand people. One quarter people. size, one half, it was, one third. It would hold a thousand people. Uh, uh, what we did uh, for about two million dollars. So if you're going to hold two thousand people, roughly four million dollars. Yeah. But I mean, so I'm still trying to get a feel for the different sizes. Foot, I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Swear, I, I don't. I, I didn't. I don't have a thing with me that we. I don't remember the size of the building. Yeah. I have to go when back looking to at it, the. If you're going to build a building, and I understand if we go back with a butler style building, we go with metal struts and uh, you know just metal siding instead of brick and concrete siding, it's going to be much less expensive to build. Now, if we go back and try and build something like there now, we can't afford it. I understand that. Well, that, the, the estimate that we ran was a was a pre-engineered steel building, but it had a brick veneer. On it, so, right. You know, it, it had you would have the brick veneer with the metal roof. Veneers on structural though. Right. It's yeah, it's pretty. No, I'm, 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 yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, once more, actually. You don't. Yeah, it's you don't block. Right. It's center blocking and, and brick. brick so, center blocking brick veneer. Still a brick veneer. So, because like on that section, when I look at it and here, you say, well, the, the joist, and I go through the mind of my mind and building the building. I go through and I lay the concrete and I build the walls up and then I put the structural steel in, and then the last part of it in is I put those 
uh, braces in to hold the roof up. The joints, yeah. So, in my way of looking at it, that's going to be probably about 80% of the building. If you just building the shell, would be maybe the floor, the walls, the structural <coughs> steel, and then maybe the roof and the other supports might be the last 20, 25 percent. Would you is that in mind the ballpark? Don't know. I uh, really look at it more as a whole, not really as pieces. Okay. So <laughs> I, I, well, I, I tend to build them in pieces, but yeah. anyhow, that's a, that's that's what I, the only thing I, I hear all these comparisons, but I can't really get it in my mind because I don't really understand the sizes. You know, we say this building costs two million, but we don't know what size it is. This one costs eight million, and we know what size it is. So that's, well, that's my only point. Well, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have a sketch that we worked off of for the right. size of the building when we talked to a contractor about some costs, but I, I don't recall right off what size that building was. Or, or how, how, but I, I certainly have it on file. Briefly. And this is getting way ahead of ourselves, but if we end up having to tear the building down, the existing building, I would love to see, and this, this was a suggestion of one of my board members, I would love to see, or that she would love to see, and I agree, the brick, because there are no telling how many million brick at that, in, as a part of that facility, used throughout, if we're going to develop this as a potential complex with our river walks, our sidewalks, and things like that, and I know um, it costs money to, to, to get it to that point where once you take them, you know, take the brick down. But uh, you know, we, I think we may have the opportunity to have some labor that might be, you know, that we could, that we could you know, incorporate that. So I just want to make that suggestion. Sure, because that would be, yeah, you know, to repurpose it. Number eight is a <clears throat> recommendation to hire Olivia Bird as a part-time worker at the Recreation Center with an hourly rate of $7.25 an hour. Uh, what we have is a current student, uh, Will Bailey. He will be leaving on July the 14th. He's already graduated high school. So Olivia will be replacing uh, Will and starting on July the 18th. And this is uh, Laurie Armstrong's recommendation to hire Olivia Bird. Is there a motion to approve this? I make a motion. Okay, great. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. <clears throat> we need to go uh, into executive session with Scott Hunt about a possible tenant for a Cody building, but in order to do that, we need a motion to amend the agenda first. Is there a motion to amend the agenda? Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, great. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Okay, do we have a motion to go in executive session? This would be to discuss preliminary uh, negotiations involving uh, consideration of real and personal property. Uh, we have an opportunity for maybe getting a co-building tenant in that building, and that's what Scott needs to give us an update on that. So is there a motion to go in executive session? We'll make a motion. Okay, Tim. Is there a second? Okay, Tim, thank you. All in favor say aye. This will be our last uh, business until we adjourn. So we won't be gone long now. Maybe 15 minutes. Scott, hopefully. I'll say 15 minutes. It turns into 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me.
Well, I don't know.